The Magic the Gathering market is constantly fluctuating, and much like stocks, it can be hard to keep up with everything that's going on in the market at all times. So today, we're going to be taking a look at 10 cards that have significantly decreased in price. Should you buy them? Well, that's up to you, my friend, but at least after this video, you'll have the knowledge, and knowledge is power. As per usual, this video is brought to you by the EDH Jank Center, your source for everything Commander and everything Jank, and I'm your host, Jordan. Now let's dive in. Our first card up today is Lord of the Void. Four black, black, black creature demon. This one is from Gate Crash. It has flying and... Whenever Lord of the Void deals combat damage to a player, exile the top seven cards of that player's library, then put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield under your control, and it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. I bought this card in 2019 for like $4, and then when I first downloaded Mana Box, not sponsored, but would love to be, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I saw that this thing had spiked to like $25, dude. However, my happiness was short-lived as now it's down to about $5. While my MTG investment portfolio is hurting from this, yours won't be if you snag this card. And what a card it is. This is just a classic ability that does something awesome for a pretty high cost, but makes for some splashy commander plays depending on what you rip off the top. Making copies of this can also get pretty disgusting. All right, moving on over to Stonehoof Chieftain. It's a seven and a green creature, centaur warrior. This one's from Commander Masters. And it says, trample, indestructible. Whenever another creature you control attacks, it gains trample and indestructible until end of turn and it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Mamma mia, that is a big boy. So in that same LGS trip that I took in 2019 where I bought four copies of Lord of the Void for like $4 each, I also picked up this card for a decent price. Once again, I was happy, then sad, because this card hit a high of about $25, then now has sunk down to below two. This is such a fun card for stompy and aggro decks that splash green folks. No need for further explanation. This thing smacks and ensures that all of your creatures that are attacked hacking smack your opponents. All right, that's it. We're moving on to Painful Quandary. Three black, black enchantment. This copy is from the Brothers War. It says, whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player loses five life unless they discard a card. Thank whatever deity you pray to, if at all, for reprints, because I don't think this video would even be possible without them. A lot of people have rightful and valid complaints about the influx and oversaturation of MTG product in the last few years, but honestly, an upside of that is that there are tons of reprints happening all the time now. This very mean, but very good, card is down to a little over a dollar after being reprinted in the Brothers War. This card spiked around Kaldheim, and I think we all know the answer to that. So, yeah, yeah, we're just gonna move on from that. Apologies if I triggered anyone with bad memories of you know who. Okay, moving on to Cunning Rhetoric which is a two and a black enchantment. This copy is from the Outlaws of Thunder Junction Precons. It says, whenever an opponent attacks you and or one or more planeswalkers you control, exile the top card of that player's library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. Dude, I actually never anticipated this card ever being under a dollar, let alone 20 cents. But here we are, and life is beautiful, kiddos. This is a Ghostly Prison-esque Pillow Fort enchantment that tended to hover around the $4 to $9 range most of its life. But thanks to reprints and maybe some other stuff that I'm not privy to, it has now sunk to under a dollar which means I can throw it into future budget builds without hesitation, baby. Pillow fording like this being made affordable is so clutch and can help smooth out a game plan for a budget deck. Specifically, this card in particular helps you as a budget player if you're playing against decks that are not budget. If your opponents attack you, you get to play their dope expensive spells for yourself. Not only is that an ego boost, but it can definitely help you in winning games too. All right, next up, we're moving on to Curse of Opulence. One red mana enchantment or a curse this copy is from the Murders at Karlov Manor precons. It says, Enchant player. Whenever enchanted player is attacked, create a gold token. Each opponent attacking that player does the same, and a gold token is an artifact with sacrifice this artifact. Add one mana of any color. 
Yet another amazing card that used to be worth double digits sinking to less than a dollar, folks. So the best thing about this card, in my opinion, is that it makes everyone attack your opponent who has this in order to snag some gold for themselves. This directs aggression away from you and helps you set up your game plan. Gold tokens are basically like treasures, except they don't tap to sacrifice. That doesn't matter though, because casting this turn one on an opponent can be so good for you over the course of the game. Yes, it ramps others at the table as well, but ideally you're going to be running things that will help you take advantage of this effect more than your opponents. Token doublers, or maybe you can switch it around in a Boros Arden build. Either way, the point is you can figure it out when you buy it and everyone should because it's under a dollar now. All right, now we're moving on to Angelic Field Marshal. Two white, white creature angel. This copy is from Commander Masters as well. It has flying and Lieutenant. As long as you control your commander, Angelic Field Marshal gets plus two, plus two, and creatures you control have Vigilance, and it's a three, three. So it appears as though everyone was super hype on this card when Giada came out in Nuka Pena, and everyone and their mom had an Angel deck again. Thanks to the hype dying off and a cheeky Commander Masters reprint, this card is now an official budget selection, meaning it's under a dollar. Any aggro or token decks love to have that board-wide Vigilance or vigilance, as I like to say sometimes when I want to throw people off. And hey, it buffs itself too, as long as you have your commander, which is pretty sweet. And a 5-5 five five with flying for four mana is nothing to laugh at, kiddos. All right, let's mosey on over to Semblance Anvil next. It's three colorless mana artifact from Scars of Mirrodin. It has imprint. When Semblance Anvil enters the battlefield, you may exile a non-land card from your hand. Spells you cast that share a card type with the exiled card cost two less to cast. Another W from the Brothers War here, folks. All my people that love artifact combos and other degenerate things like that should be rejoicing because this former $8-er is now just over $1. This card turns two mana artifacts into zero mana artifacts. And I mean, you can figure it out from there. Sack it, recur it, trigger, repeat, something like that. Someone in the comments let us know what the most degenerate thing you can do with Semblance Anvil is. I'm actually curious. Moving on over to Goldspan Dragon next. Next, three red red creature dragon. This one is from Kaldheim and it has flying and haste. Whenever Goldspan Dragon attacks or becomes the target of a spell, create a treasure token. Treasures you control have tap, sacrifice this artifact, add two mana of any one color, and it's a four four. And here we have our most expensive card of the day, and it's around eight dollars, but it has fallen from quite a height, folks, having hit a peak of around forty dollars during the fall of. 2021. Now is the time to grab it though, folks, because treasures are never going away in this format and being able to sack them for double the mana goes so hard. And then on top of that, it generates treasures itself. And if that weren't enough, it comes in with flying in haste. So it can generate you a treasure and hit for some damage the same turn it comes in. This was a staple in my wort X spells deck, and I hope it can do the same thing for a build of yours in the future. All right, now we're going to look at Avabruck Caretaker. Four green, green creature, human werewolf from Innistrad Crimson Vow. It says, Hexproof. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put two plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control. And it has Daybound. If a player casts no spells during their own turn, it becomes Knight next turn, and it's a 4 4. And it transforms into Hollowhenge Huntmaster. This is a creature werewolf, also from the same set. It has Hexproof. Other permanents you control have hexproof. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, put two plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. And it has nightbound and it's a six, six. This is a clear case of hype just dying out on a card once it is in the format long enough. I'm sure it also benefited from being in standard as well, but now that that's passed, plus one counter enthusiasts like myself should be drooling because this former double digit card is no longer so out of reach. Comfortably sitting at just above $3 right now, there is no better time to snag this for your current or prospective plus one plus one counter build. Hexproof and two counters on something every single one of your turns is just so sensational, folks. Then if, you know, the day-night shenanigans happen, we could end up getting counters on everything, which is very cool. And lastly, we've got Pearl Medallion, which is... Two colorless mana artifact. This copy is from Modern Horizons 3, and it simply says, white spells you cast cost one less to cast. 
Although things have improved significantly in the past few years, white always needs as much ramp as it can get, and Pearl Medallion is one of the best options. To see it be at less than $2 is pretty cool considering its forebears were very used to being in the double digits pretty regularly. But thanks to reprints, budget builders can actually maybe consider throwing this into a build which is very exciting. I know I certainly am looking forward to it, and I hope you are too. And just like that, we're at the end of this week's video, kiddos. What card have you noticed have gone really down in price? Did I miss anything? I'm always down there in the comments with you guys, so come on down and have a chat with me. And hey, if you'd like to get extra entries in our monthly Discord giveaways, win prizes in our monthly deck building contests, and play spell table games with me and my co-host Cress every month, check out our Patreon in the description below. We've got lots of awesome ways to support. And if you want to snag a Pyramid Designs playmat through our affiliate link, check that out in the description below. If you use our link, you get 30% off your purchase. And for those who may not have the funds but still want to be part of the community, you can always hop in our Discord. Discord completely for free and join our wonderful community of jank lovers. Another free way to support us is by liking and subscribing to the channel, following us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at EDH Jank Center. And that's really it. All right, I'm out and I'll see you on the next video.